Hi, my name is Tomislav Galianic, and welcome to the lecture on supervised machine learning. In this lecture, we will have an overview of what supervised machine learning is. And then in the following two lectures, we will look at two methods that are very popular with the data science pr practitioners today. They include decision trees and random forests. So let's start with uh, machine learning and uh, basically two flavors of it that we typically uh, speak about. So one of them is called unsupervised machine learning. And this is a problem where we have certain um, set of uh, input data points, let's call them x1 through xn, uh, which can be explained by different features, uh, multidimensional, uh, you know, anywhere uh, like a two-dimensional problem that's, that we see in a top right corner uh, diagram, too many, many uh, dimensions. Uh, and so in this particular problem, what we're interested in is to see if certain data points are closer to each other and can be actually separated in uh, groups. Um, so uh, just by looking at our picture here on the, uh, on the top right corner, uh, we can actually see that uh, these uh, data observations can be separated actually into no, non-overlapping uh, sets um, uh, that we have just uh, you know, described as two circles, uh, blue and red. So um, in the second flavor of the machine learning problem, which we call supervised machine learning, uh, we are not only looking at uh, the data points one through n uh, and, and how they're different in their features, uh, feature values, rather we're also looking at, you know, how the labels of those data points are different. And so, uh, you know, staying with the same theme uh, in the bottom right corner, when we look at our, uh, our data points, and now we see that we have two groups, one of which we still have labeled as X and, and the other one which we have labeled with O's. And so in a supervised uh, type of problem, what we would like to do is actually define a function that will map our, uh, our, our feature values to those uh, different, um, you know, different output classes. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what a workflow uh, looks for a, a typical machine learning problem. Um, as it turns out, we often start with uh, unsupervised machine learning and that is to identify, uh, you know, useful features uh, to extract from our available data. Uh, for example, we may have a problem which has uh, many features, uh, but maybe not as many data points. In that case, it is very important for us to really just extract uh, those features that are most important for actually our, uh, for our uh, supervised machine learning problem, okay? Uh, so we may run some, some procedures like the principal component analysis. Once we have uh, that data uh, available, then uh, you know, we will actually go ahead and uh, train a supervised learning model. Okay, so, um, so let's see what it actually looks like. So uh, the supervised machine learning problem starts with, uh, you know, with a particular matrix of extracted features. And so if we're looking at our data set as a uh, set of pictures that we have on the left-hand side, then uh, you know, along with those pictures, we may have some extracted features such as, does an image on, on, this, on any of those pictures show us uh, that uh, we see a beak, uh, you know, that we see webbed feet, or do we have any information about uh, you know, whether the image or the object uh, in the image on the left-hand side quacks or it doesn't quack. So based on those uh, features, we would also uh, have, uh, you know, certain associated uh, class definitions. Uh, in, in this particular problem, we're looking at classifying whether an image is a duck. And so based on, uh, you know, on those extracted features, such as whether uh, you know, we see the object has a beak, it has webbed feet or it quacks or not. We will have a then associated uh, as well its class value. And, and in this particular problem, it would be whether the object is a duck or it's not a duck. So um, you know, we see basically that uh, you know, the top two images would be images of duck. Uh, they may not necessarily have exactly the same features. Um, and then we have a third image, which is an image of a cow, which uh, clearly is not a duck. And then 
and we also see that uh, the value of, 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 uh, of, of features uh, for the three features that we have defined are also different than the values that the two images above have. Okay, so uh, let's talk a little bit about what's happening under the covers as we talk about uh, training and learning, uh, you know, in a supervised manner. Uh, so uh, basically what it is, is that uh, we have, uh, you know, we have certain features which are described in our matrix X and we have uh, corresponding uh, class values Y. And uh, what we're trying to do is define a function with, that will map appropriately the values in the, in the feature matrix to the, to the class um, um, our variable Y. So, uh, you know, we would like to have an algorithm uh, or a function basically that says that if, you know, if we see an object which has a beak, it has webbed feet and we know it quacks, then it maps it to a class value is a duck. Uh, and if we have, you know, object which doesn't have a beak, it doesn't have webbed feet, it doesn't quack, then, you know, most likely it's going to be, uh, it's not going to be a duck. And therefore we would like a function to say then, hey, you know, based on these features, uh, we can conclude that this object is not a duck. Uh, so, uh, you know, having a, perfect function that will perfectly map our, our, our data features into output variables without making any mistake is challenging in practice. And so typically we will not be able to, uh, to, to be perfect in this uh, classification, uh, but rather we will define uh, some, uh, some, um, some sort of uh, error function or loss function. And then what we'll try to do is to find the, a mapping function which minimizes that uh, loss or error as we do the predictions. Okay, so let's talk about a prediction. Uh, so in a prediction, we would have uh, a completely new uh, observation data point. So it'd be like a picture on the left-hand side. Uh, from it, we would extract certain features. So we would say, hey, it has a beak, it quacks, but you know, we, we can't say whether it has wet feet or not. And then our model would actually do a prediction. And let's say in this particular case, our model was good and was actually able to predict the right class. And so it would recognize that it is a duck. Okay. So uh, one thing to, uh, to, um, to really pay attention to is uh, uh, when specifying the model that uh, the model performance in the, with the training data set uh, may be quite different than the model performance when we're looking outside of that training sample and we're looking at, you know, completely new, uh, you know, and different uh, testing data points. And, and that's really something that, uh, you know, it's, uh, we have to, you know, pay attention and be very careful when building the model. So we don't build one that is uh, overfitting the, uh, uh, the definition. Okay, so uh, let's quickly talk about uh, two types of, of supervised machine learning. Um, and, and I sort of alluded more or less um, uh, to the classification problem in the previous slides. Um, the duck problem was a classification problem. Uh, and it's a classification problem in that we have a Y variable, which is categorical. That is, it can only take values from a, a limited set. Uh, and so in this particular case, our categories were, you know, is object a duck or it is not a duck. Okay. We can also have, you know, different other problems where we're looking at, you know, whether a user will click on an image or a advertisement on a screen or not and so forth. Uh, the second most typical uh, use of supervised learning is for regression type of problems. And in regression type of problems, we have uh, actually a, a continuous uh, data range uh, rather than a limited set of, uh, of classes. And so here we will be typically, you know, talking about, uh, you know, trying to predict some numeric variables like age, dollar spent, prices, or so forth. Okay, so let's uh, talk a little bit about a classification. Um, and uh, really most of the things we'll talk about here will also be easily extended to the, uh, to the uh, uh, regression problem. So uh, when uh, building uh, and evaluating classifier, we typically go through a three-step process that is training, validating, and testing. A validation can be an optional step uh, and uh, um, that one is really, uh, you know, used when we have a, you know, a model uh, that, you know, has certain hyperparameters. Uh, and so we, when you want to tune it, 
Uh, so let me start from the from the from the left hand side. Uh, training is an integral part, right? This is where we define our function that maps our x features to y. And then the test part, um, like I said uh, earlier, we need to really test the performance of our uh, trained model uh, outside of that training sample to see how well it does with the with the predicted uh, with, with sort of the unseen data. Uh, the validation um, step, as I said, uh, is uh, something that is also typically used, especially when we have models uh, which have certain hyperparameters. And hyperparameters are basically parameters that we use to kind of select uh, among the same class of models to select which one uh, may work the best. And we typically also use it to try to prevent overfitting in our, in our uh, data sets. Okay, so, uh, you know, why three stages? Um, you know, as I said, um, you know, we're trying to learn from the training data, but also be able to generalize. Um, you know, when we build models that fit uh, really well with the training data, the danger is, you know, they will have a hard time performing well outside of the, uh, the scene uh, data sets. Uh, validation uh, helps us compare different uh, settings to see which is better. And then, you know, we evaluate the performance um, you know, sort of what we would sort of expect in the real world with unseen data through the uh, use of the testing data. Um, one other thing to, uh, to be uh, cognizant in the, in the model building process is that the training itself may be computationally costly, and that's especially the case when we're talking about some of the more complex models like neural nets. And finally, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the methods and tools that are available to us uh, through uh, Python, uh, the key library uh, that is available for, uh, for uh, supervised learning in Python is, um, is called scikit-learn and it provides a standard interface. Uh, typically the process of training, testing and, 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 and evaluating the model performance is uh, through the three steps. Number one, we start off with a, uh, you know, creation of a classifier. Uh, we, we can set certain parameters to initiate it with. Next, once we have our training data defined, uh, both the features and the actual class, uh, and we have uh, created an, an, an instance of the classifier, then we call a fit function, which will actually fit or find the best function uh, you know, based on the, uh, the classifiers we selected and the input uh, data, the training data, um, X and Y. The final step in the process is to see how the actually the classifier performs when it uh, you know, sees uh, data from our outside of the training sample. And so that is done by utilizing method called predict. So typically we'll call that method and provide to it the uh, testing data set. And then we will actually uh, see how those values compare to the true Y values of the testing data set. Okay, so this is all for the overview. And in the next lecture, we will start looking at the decision trees algorithms.